Good afternoon, everyone. Australia setting a new temperature cold extreme, minus 10.4 C. Goulburn Airport showing up in the raw data, Canberra area, yet on the daily temperature rundown, it's actually not a record any longer. 10.0. Wait, so they reduced a cold temperature record into not a record and raised the temperature. And then when they got caught, they just left the space blank. Actually, what's happening is they're setting the limits incredibly high on the low end so it doesn't register new cold records. It only goes high on the high end. They finally had to readjust the temperature after they were caught and there was so much controversy out through the social media stream in Australia. With the solar forcing model showing that we're going to be cooling through all wavelength light spectrums as well as TSI, 10.7 meter flux. The grand solar minimum forecast shows cooling starting right now. Global temperatures have dropped since 2016. All these signs are around us that we're entering a new era in our climate system that's going to affect crop prices, and they're still meddling with data. They really need to be held accountable, and it's us as the citizenry. They need to start answering and getting into a more public arena where their lies are shown to the general public so everybody starts to wake up. And this video is brought to you by Trade Genius. Bob Kudla is trading on crop price increases and commodities increases brought on by Grand Solar Minimum weather anomalies. I left the link in the description box below. Send him an email, contact him by phone. He'll definitely talk with you, explain what commodities they see rising in price. Taking a look at Goldburn Airport, this is the location, Southeast Australia. It's known as one of the cooler areas, a little bit northwest of Canberra there. What had happened is they set a new cold record at minus 10.4 C, breaking all previous records. As noted in the raw data picked up by other temperature stations. White out for you here, you can see at 617 with that red asterisk, new temperature record broken. Yet somehow, when the daily record weather observations came out, this number had been increased to 10.0, which made it not a record breaking event. You can see the orange arrow. Let's take a look at the white out here. You're looking for the lowest Sunday, the second, second column down, minus 10.0 in blue. These are incorrect. They're adjusting the temperatures, the daily weather observations, and then once caught red-handed by Joe Nova's original report, then Jennifer Morrissey, then the entire blogosphere lit up in Australia about this. And I love how the BM acknowledged the change, but they still left a blank space there, didn't adjust the temperature. They don't want you to think it's cooling. It's got to be warm only, warm only. How much of the Australian news media picked up on it? Page one, record warm. Oh yeah, BOM erases record cold. Where's that in the headlines? Didn't see it in the Sydney Morning Herald. Also, Joe Nova dissects it really well here. What they're doing is they're taking the normal round expected cutoff raw measurement data and programming in a cutoff point. So they're setting up limits on the thermometer readings to filter out what they call spurious or anomalous or strange data points. So if there's a new record cold that registers 10.5, 10.7 or 11, it'll actually be cut off for the histogram here. It won't register because they set the lows artificially high. Yet on the high side, you can see how much it can increase into total highs. So the highs can be higher, but the lows, well, those got a cutoff point because we can't show cooling. And this is definitely from the mindset. This is an agenda right here. This is a criminal act. They are hiding cold temperature records. And I know you can come out and talk to your blue in the face and try to explain it with all your technical jargon about how raw data comes in and you get temperature anomalies and this and that. They're hiding the data. They finally had to acknowledge it and finally had to paste it in, but this occurred on the 7th. So if you actually go to the website, you have to get into the CSV file or go into other data archive files to find it. It's not actually on the front page any longer. And also, Joe Nova, another good article here, the electricity cost train wreck in Australia. They've closed, destroyed, demolished the coal burning power plants all based on the CO2 lie. Now they need to run on wind and solar, yet that's so 
unreliable that what it's doing it's driving electrical costs to all-time highs let this be a lesson for the rest of the world we got scrubbers and clean burning coal and clean burning natural gas we do not need to close those reliable energy delivery systems down and rely on something that's intermittent at best that's going to drive the price up not only are your food prices going to be rising at the end of the year 20 30 40 percent and then when we get into 2018 it's going to get up double priced wind prices for electricity are going into all-time highs australia is going to get double slammed here that consumer economy and that disposable income that might be spent in the australian economy is going to get sucked right into this higher electrical costs and higher food costs so look for australia to be one of the first countries that gets decimated in their economy when the food price rises at the end of the year and into 2018. They're going to show more decline in the economy than almost any other place on the planet. So quickly, it's going to make your head spin what happened down there. This is it. High electricity and high food cost diverting spendable, discretionary, disposable income out of the real consumer economy. Which is going to be an enormous amount of businesses go bankrupt and close down in Australia. It's going to be an instant thing almost. And what irks me about this whole climate gate Australia slash fraud in the weather from the Bureau of Meteorology is its forecast lower solar activity into a grand solar minimum. And instead of actually telling the people that we were predicting IPCC models to go warm, but you know what? Let's take a look at the new information. These outliers in the cold don't seem to fit with the model, so maybe something's changed. Instead of coming clean and trying to work together with the people in the country, they just keep their agenda moving forward, not allowing you time to prepare, keeping you in the dark about what's to unfold. Here is the forecast. Also, they keep telling you there's no scientists that agree it's 97% CO2 warms everything. Well, this new paper out last week has 19 different solar physicists, astrophysicists, climatologists, all on the exact same page, compiling their research on solar forcing in the grand solar minimum starting right now. This is their forecast going out. Decline in the different wavelength spectrum, nanometer, 200 to 400 at the top bar. 400 to 700 is the center bar. That's generally where we get our plants to grow in that spectrum. They need that nanometer wavelength. There's some that trend up above 700, 750, 760 on the bottom chart there. But you can see that orange line I put is where we are now. And we're just going to continue to descend into cooler temperatures. And then when we look at TSI, we start to see decreases in that as well as the 10.7 meter flux, which also measures output of the sun. And this goes right into the sunspots and the grand solar minimum. Now we got so many variables piling on top of each other, corroborating the evidence that it's starting to have some change on our climate system based on the sun's input. And out of the same report, the trend for TSI is definitely not increasing. And then we look at UAH over at Dr. Roy Spencer's site. So we're up to version 6.0. This is the latest version. It's right up there with the latest versions within the last six months of RSS. And this is what they're showing. Only 0.21 degree increase over the baseline in the satellite era. Now, when we look at the data in a numeral form, if you just match up these three month increments, April, May, June from 2016 to April, May, June, 2017, you can see that it's declining. And again, everybody will come and say, whoa, well, it's after a huge El Nino. Yeah, but the IPCC models were saying we we're going to warm into infinity. And temperatures are dropping. And it really comes down to the power in the masses of the people. How many of you have written to the BOM? How many of you even knew that this was happening in Australia? If you're an Australian citizen, how, did you hear about this before? And if you didn't, you need to write the newspapers and ask why this was not a story. And then you need to follow up writing to the BOM or calling them and say, hey, what happened to the temperature data? They need to be held accountable. They need to be pulled into court is what they need to do. You know what's happening with Tim Ball and Michael Mann? Now, Michael Mann's even refusing to hand over the temperature data that he used to accuse Tim Ball on a slander suit. 
So what's happening with Michael Mann's hockey stick? He won't even hand over the data to be reviewed. So you know there's something wrong there. It just takes court and discovery to get these guys out in the open and show the true fraud and manipulation that's going on. And I can't state it highly enough. It's a time to get prepared and at least understand what's going on so you can protect yourselves and your family, yet they're not even allowing you to have this basic, minimal knowledge to show that there's changes going on based on 400-year cycles in the sun, and that in itself is just criminal. The agenda for global warming needs to keep pushing forward. Thanks for watching. Hope you got something out of the video. And those of you listening in Australia, it's absolutely your job to hold these people accountable. You're a citizen of that nation. You have the laws in your favor. They should be called out. They should be put in court. They should have to explain why they're reducing these temperatures. And you also need to ask yourself, how many other times has this happened that didn't get caught or found out?